video starting at the density point of these notes because I figure the first part of the notes you can figure that out on your own you don't need my help to read through you know the different SI units and, and all that stuff if you do need if you do have questions about those just either email me or come in and I'll help you with them um, so I did want to talk about density though because this is where the math um, practice questions and stuff like that come up. So density is a ratio of mass to volume. It is an actual formula that looks like that. It is on your formula chart, so you do not need to memorize these. Uh, the SI units of density are kilograms per meter cubed. But just like I said earlier in the notes, we don't use kilograms. We don't really use meters cubed. What we use for our units on density in this class is uh, for typical liquids, we're going to use grams per milliliter or grams per centimeter cubed. They're the exact same thing. If we're talking about gases, we're going to use grams per liter. And the reason that we don't use grams per centimeter cubed, grams per milliliter for gases, because gases are so spread out that this number would be tiny. So we use this number so we have a little bit more space to get some more mass in there. So we have a, you know, a number that we can work with. Uh, a lot of words about to come up here. Density is a defining property of a substance. It's an identifying property. It's almost like a birthmark. Um, every substance has a specific density that you can use to identify that substance. And there are tables in the back of textbooks and in reference books all over the place that if you had a substance and you were able to figure out its density, which is pretty easy to do, uh, then you could look up the density of that unknown object and you could figure out what it's made of. Um, the little thing about density is that density will usually go down, meaning things will get more spread out uh, as the temperature increases. That's thermal expansion, and of course the flip side of that is true. As things cool off, the density tends to go up. They get more compacted. The big exception to this is that ice is less dense than uh, liquid water. Ice, uh, when water freezes, it actually spreads out um, and has more space. It's basically, it happens at about four degrees Celsius. Yes, I know water is still liquid at this state, but this is water's most dense temperature. Above this, it starts to spread out. Below this, it starts to spread out. And that's why ice floats, because anything that has a lower density will float on something that has a higher density. <clears throat> density has, or water has a density of one, by the way little tidbit, something you need to know. So how do you find density? Super duper easy. I'm going to show you how to do this though using the guess method. Guess method is something that our physics teachers here just absolutely love. And I'm going to go ahead and show it to you so you can get used to working with it so that when you get into physics next year it's not such a shock to your system. So this is just a procedure for working out math problems. So you have word problems really. G stands for given write out what you know. U stands for unknown. Write out what you don't know. E stands for the equation that you will use to solve for the unknown. The first S is substitute. You're given into your equation. And then the last step is solve for your unknown. So this is the method that we're going to use on every math, word, problem-y type of question that we ever have. And this is what it looks like. So find the density. We know that we are using density equals mass over volume. So this tells us what we need to write out. Density, mass, volume. Sample of aluminum metal has a mass of love it when they make it obvious. 8.4 grams. The volume is 3.1 centimeters cubed. Find the density. So that means density is x. There's g and u right there. Our givens and our unknown. So now we need our equation rearranged for our unknown. Super nice thing. It already is. So density equals mass over volume. There's our equation. Now we're going to substitute in our numbers, 8.4 grams, 3.1 centimeters cubed, and now we solve. And this works out too when you put it into your calculator, 2.7 grams per centimeter cubed. You can see your units right here. It makes it nice and easy. 
All right, conversion factors are ratios that come from basically a statement of equality between two different but related units. So here's our statement of equality. Four quarters equals one dollar. Nobody is going to debate that. What if instead of a conversion factor we wanted this to be a fraction? Well if we divided both sides by four quarters quarters would cancel out because you got quarters on top of quarters and the four would cancel out leaving behind one and you would have what's known as a conversion factor. Could we have gone the other direction and divided both sides by one dollar? Of course! And we would simply have four quarters over one dollar equals one. So what's the whole point of this? Why, why am I talking about this? Well what if you needed to convert from one unit to another? you could use a conversion factor to do it really easily. Um, basically you're just multiplying by one when you multiply by a conversion factor which we all learned in pretty early on in math classes that anything multiplied by one is just that same thing. Um, let's see, I don't really want to talk about any of that. So let's say we wanted to convert 5.2 centimeters to millimeters. There's two ways to do this. There's the move the decimal way, which is extremely easy. And then there's the conversion factor way, which looks kind of unnecessary right now. And in all honesty, it is. But I wanted to show it to you anyways while the math is still easy. So the first way to do it uses the old King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk trick. Um, or you could say kiss her daily because divorce costs money. You take your number and you put it the decimal underneath the letter that corresponds to your prefix that you have. So C is right here, so we're going to put my decimal right there. My 2 and my 5 go right there. And I want to go from centimeters to millimeters, so I need to take my decimal and I need to move it over to where millimeters was. So 5.2 centimeters is equal to 52 millimeters. Now that's the significantly easier way to do it. This is the way that I recommend that you do all of your metric conversions. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how the this this looks using a conversion factor. So I know that basically all I had to do was look at a ruler that one centimeter is equal to ten millimeters. So my conversion factor could be one centimeter over ten millimeters. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to use it like this or if I'm going to have to flip it. So 5.2 centimeters is what I'm starting with. <clears throat> and I like to use the whole horizontal vertical line thing, the grid setup. I just, it keeps things nice and neat and you can keep track of stuff and hopefully it keeps you from getting confused. Now, whatever I put over here, this line means multiply. This line means divide. So I'm not going to put anything over here. This is my starting unit. I just put it over one like the last slide said. Over here is where I'm going to put my conversion unit. But I want to make sure that I orient it in such a way that my centimeters cancel out. And if you guys remember from your math class, whatever is on top of a divide line, fraction line, if that identical thing is on bottom, then they cancel out. So if I were to take this conversion factor right here and flip it to where one centimeter was on bottom, 10 millimeters is on top, and then I put it in this, I call these blocks, uh, put it in this block right here, my one centimeter over 10 millimeters. Well, now I end up with a centimeter on top and a centimeter on bottom, which means I get to cancel them out. They get to go away because remember, this means multiply, this means divide. So I got centimeters on both top and bottom of the line. And then all that I'm left with is 5.2 times 10, which equals 52. The only unit I have left is millimeters. So two different ways to get about solving for the same thing. Uh, this is a technique that we will practice with so much, and by the end of the year, I guarantee you'll be pros at it. Uh, 
kilograms to milligrams. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with King Henry. I guess if I'm a good teacher, I should probably do it both ways. Uh, but I don't think I really have time. So point zero to zero. I need to go all the way to milligrams right here. So each letter, I give a bump. Two, base, D, C, M. Right there. Fill in all these little empty bumps with zeros. So 0 0.02 kilograms is equal to 20,000 milligrams. Okay, I'm not going to do another example because I think you guys are good. We don't need that. At advanced conversions, what if we're dealing with density? And we have our units as grams per milliliter. And we needed to convert it to kilograms per liter. Convert one unit at a time. Don't try to do both at once. I usually typically start with the unit that's on top first and get it to where I want it and then work on the unit on the bottom. And then you use the exact same block setup. So let's say I wanted to convert 350 grams per milliliter to kilograms per liter. Well, I'm going to start my block 350 whoopsie daisy, sorry, 350 grams per milliliter. First thing I'm going to do is convert grams to kilograms. Well, I know that 1,000 grams equals 1 kilogram. And since I have grams on top here, I want grams on bottom here. So that 1,000 grams is going to go here, 1 kilogram there. Bam, grams taken care of. Next, I need to take care of the milliliters and liters. I know that there is 1,000 milliliters in one liter. So since I got milliliters on bottom, I actually want the 1,000 milliliters on top, one liter on the bottom. You'll find that you have to keep extending out your line on these things. It's no big deal. And so now my milliliters cancels out. And I am left with kilograms per liter. If you notice, though, we have 1,000 on top. We have 1,000 on bottom. That means those guys can cancel each other out. And hey, look, we don't have to do any math now. 350 kilograms per liter. Easy as pie. All right, and that is all I've got. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to come on in in the morning, and I'll help you with what I can. Or if you can't come in in the morning, just send me an email. We can work something out.